They tow buses down the highway and haul heavy military equipment through the forest. They move the world's largest aircraft, recover tanks from war zones, and haul enormous launch vehicles. These heavy-duty transporters are among the most powerful towing and recovery vehicles in the world. This aircraft can weigh up to 400 tons. I can move it with a tow truck that's just 40 or 45 tons. These towing vehicles often transport 30 times their own weight, and the loads they carry are huge. That's 1,300, 1,400 tons on the hook and back. These speciality vehicles are called into action when exceptionally heavy loads need to be transported or recovered. Their missions are often dangerous ones, so safety is a top priority. It could easily kill someone if it snapped. They get called in for the toughest jobs and the heaviest loads. The mega towers, the most powerful recovery vehicles in the world. Decked out in camouflage paint, the Bison military recovery vehicle was designed for use in war zones. The 503 horsepower behemoth can tow up to 50 tons and its armor helps it survive shelling and blasts from landmines filled with up to 10 kilos of TNT. The German armed forces currently own 12 of these vehicles. Today, a two-member crew is on a training mission. A 10-ton military vehicle is stranded at the roadside. It's the Bison crew's job to recover it. Master Sergeants Robert Nickel and Frank Ulbricht start with a survey of the deployment site. Attach it here? Right. Yeah. They calculate the tensile forces that will come into play to ensure nothing's damaged during the operation. The factors we have to take into account are the terrain, the weight of the vehicle, and what the ground's like. With a high center of gravity, I calculate using the entire vehicle weight. With a low center of gravity, like here, I'll use half the weight of the vehicle. So if we assume roughly 10 tons here, we'll calculate a maximum of 5 tons of tensile force. All right, radio's on. Tell me where to go. The 35-ton bison is moved into position, allowing the deployment of both the front and rear winch. The soldiers position two heavy return pulleys on either side of the truck. Two sturdy trees will serve as supports during the recovery maneuver. Master Sergeant Nickel has to use all his strength to pull the 50-meter cable out of the self-recovery winch. It has a rating of 10 tons. Then he spans it into the first return pulley, which is already attached to a tree. The main recovery winch is located at the rear of the bison. Master Sergeant Ulbricht drags the 120 meter long cable to the second return pulley. It's looped around the tree, clipped and bolted. The second attachment point is now ready to go. They move on to the capsized truck. They need a sturdy spot to attach the shackles. If we picked a different spot, like, say, the tail lift, it would just be ripped off. So that wouldn't work. The recovery vehicle is attached at two points. Now the truck will be carefully hoisted back upright. One winch is used to pull, the other to stabilize the vehicle. That helps prevent damage. In a wartime situation, the military truck would need to return to duty as quickly as possible. The bison is also secured. The recovery jacks at the rear help stabilize it on the soft ground. 
If we don't do that, the vehicle could end up subsiding and slide in the pull direction or even hit the tipping point. The two ropes could tip the vehicle over. That would be fun. This setup will keep the bison from tipping. The winches attached to the trees help with that too. Up to five tons of weight force are acting on this cable, all the way up to the return pulley, pulling it in this direction. On the other side, there's five tons of tensile force pulling toward the vehicle. Both forces meet right in the middle of the return pulley. Those forces are additive, so we have to find a tree that's strong enough to withstand 10 tons. The two recovery experts have to estimate what load the trees can bear based on experience. Master Sergeant Robert Nickel climbs into the armored cab. He'll guide both winches simultaneously by remote control. Right. I'll move. Thank you. Okay, let's get going. Experience, good instincts, and teamwork all come into play. The self-recovery winch is in place. The main winch at the rear of the bison helps secure the 10-ton vehicle from a hard landing. On the other side, the bison slowly pulls the truck back upright. Engage the winches. Slowly. The soldiers maintain control over the truck at all times. As long as it doesn't tip over, it won't be damaged. We have to make sure the winches are engaged so that one side tracks and the other side pulls properly. Release main switch and stop. The bison saw its first deployment in 2012 in Afghanistan. It was the first vehicle of its kind that could recover loads of up to 40,000 kilos this quickly and efficiently. After 45 minutes, the capsized truck is upright again. And done. 10 tons on the ground. Phase one of the recovery operation is complete. Our mission is successful so far. We got the vehicle upright without any complications. It didn't slide or fall. And we'll be able to tow it without significant damage. Phase two is next, the towing. They'll only use iron chains. In a combat scenario, this would be the fastest way to get out of possible danger. The lift arm extends backwards and the heavy recovery chains are looped around the front axle. We looped our regular recovery chains around the axle, which created a secure connection. Fully extended, the bison's lift arm can hoist 10 tons. But Master Sergeant Nickel retracts the arm part way. They'll soon be driving at top speed, and the forces exerted on the lifting cradle will be immense. The truck is hoisted two meters into the air. Now it's hanging by its own weight on the chains. Only the two rear axles are still on the ground. The flag is attached, and they're ready to go. Master Sergeant Ulbricht draws on the engine's 500 horsepower and gets the bison moving along the unpaved road. The recovery vehicle soon reaches the maximum speed of 85 kilometers an hour. The bison used by the German armed forces consumes 60 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers. In the armored cab, the two-member crew is protected from shelling and attack. All-wheel drive powers the 12 tires on the four axles across even the most difficult terrain. The 35-ton bison costs 1.2 million euros, making for a truly high-end recovery vehicle. At the Leipzig Halle airport, flights are on a tight schedule. 65,000 aircraft pass through here every year. 175 takeoffs every day. Airplanes can't move backwards easily. That's why tow trucks haul them from gate to gate or give them what's called a pushback onto the runway. This AST-3 aircraft tractor might not look like much, 
but it's a real powerhouse. Clocking in at 9,000 kilos, the tractor can move aircraft weighing up to 160 tons. Pushback specialist Thomas Fuller has been operating vehicles like this for years. Using an AST-3, he can move an average of 10 aircraft per eight-hour shift. A few minutes before takeoff, the tractor approaches the airplane. The driver first needs to assume control over the aircraft. This simple steering pin makes it a snap. This is the steering pin, which temporarily deactivates the aircraft's steering unit. The captain could still brake, of course, but he won't do that because it would create a big jolt. I'm fully in control of the steering, which is a nice feeling. In theory, I could do whatever I wanted with the aircraft. Once the steering pin is in place, the pilot in the cockpit releases the parking brake. Thomas Fuhle now assumes control of the 150-ton aircraft. The tractor then docks its lifting mechanism onto the nose wheel and gets ready to take the aircraft for a ride. The AST-3's hydraulics allow the aircraft to lift off before it gets underway, even if it's just by 30 centimeters. I try to move forward so that the pushback and the aircraft end up in a straight line. The aircraft is undocked from the boarding bridge and the pushback maneuver begins. The tractor and cockpit remain in constant radio contact. The tandem will now make its way 300 meters across the wet tarmac. The AST-3 is equipped with hydrostatic power steering that allows for gentle acceleration without changing gears up to a maximum speed of 33 kilometers an hour. That might not sound like much, but when it comes to moving aircraft, power comes before speed. Conditions today are less than ideal, but the all-wheel drive has enough traction on the wet tarmac to move the aircraft safely into position. At this time of year, it's still relatively easy. The big problems come in the winter. Right now, the only problem is that reflections make it hard to see. But steering the tractor aircraft tandem always poses a challenge. When the driver steers to the left, the aircraft swings right. And the same goes for the other way around. At higher speeds, the driver has to maintain a specific steering angle for safety reasons. The permitted angle of steering varies according to the model of aircraft. One of the special features of the compact AST-3 pushback tractor is its special lifting system. Most of the force ends up here, which is what supports the wheels. This part helps me push the aircraft out. This back is fastened to make sure the aircraft is securely connected to my truck. Special sensors on the lifting device allow the AST-3 to automatically detect what model of aircraft it's dealing with. For each aircraft model, the maximum tensile and brake force is set automatically. Airports around the world swear by this small but mighty towing vehicle. The 28-ton Colossus is on home territory, the A-10 motorway near Berlin. The yellow bison belonging to the German Automobile Association, ADAC, is called in when buses, trucks, or transporters weighing 40 tons and up need a tow. The crew has just started their eight-hour shift. Whenever a heavy weight is stranded south of Berlin, a call comes in. A tow home? What's wrong with it? 150 heavy load service calls arrive here every year. 80% of them require towing. The information is immediately passed on to the bison. The two-man crew sets out to answer the service call. Although it clocks in at 28 tons, thanks to its 500 horsepower turbocharged V8 engine, the 10 meter long bison has a top speed of 88 kilometers an hour. A truck like this isn't fast. 